Hi, welcome back. So, John Deere S110, this is pretty new. I already did one little video on it when I first got it. I'll put a link up here for that. It's kind of a funny video. I just uh, put on my GoPro and kind of filmed myself running around with it the first time. Didn't really know what to do with it, so I just kind of made a funny, funny video. But it doesn't have a whole lot of actual, you know, details about the uh, John Deere here itself. So I thought I should probably do a proper practical review now that I've mowed the yard four or five times now. So let's get started. Although we're going to pause because here comes somebody else's on. This is an S110. And uh, you can get the S100 at places like uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. Well, I got this from the dealer here in town. Most of the dealers start up S110, at least, according to the, the dealer here in town. The differences between the S100 and the S110, the S110 here, it's got an open back, it's a little bit larger, a little bit more comfortable seat, and it's got a little bit bigger motor. It's got a 19 horsepower motor compared to a 17 and a half inch. The next one in the line is the 120, and that's where you're kind of getting a bigger step up. The S120 has, the 100 and the 110 have Briggs and Stratton single cylinder engines. The 120 has a 22 horsepower V twin Kohler, um, and otherwise it's the same. Most of the S120s also have the quick change oil filter feature, which is like a giant oil filter with all the the oil already in it. So you just swap it out in some sort of valve so you don't spill everything. Um, this does not have that, and it goes on up from there. There's the S130, I think, might be where it jumps up to 46 or 48 inch cut. This is a 42 inch cut, by the way. The 100, the 110, and the 120 are. 42 inch cuts. I've got 3.7 hours on this so far, and like I said, I think I've mowed five times. So it takes me about 45 minutes to mow in my yard. I can get about three mowings out of a tank of fuel. It's got a two and a half gallon tank. Most of the 100 series have a two and a half gallon tank. Now, a couple of people have asked what kind of oil and how often do you change oil? It just uses 10 weight 30, and you want to change the oil every 50 hours or once a year. My thoughts and opinions after running it for four hours. It turns super tight. I took a couple pictures of the wheels. I'll show those here. Um, it's really maneuverable. It starts really easy. Safety mechanisms. If the blades are engaged and you get off of it, of course it shuts off. If you try to get off of it with the blades disengaged and the parking brake disengaged, it'll shut off. So the only way to be able to get off the lawnmower with it running is to have the blades disengaged, the parking brake engaged, and then you can get off of it without it shutting off. It's pretty fast mowing. I mean, it should be. It's got a top speed of five miles per hour, and I think its optimal cutting speed is three and a half miles per hour. Of course, with the 42 inch cut, it's a little bit big. Actually, from my yard here, I only have about a third of an acre, so it's kind of an overkill mower, but I really don't like mowing, so I'd rather have it be fun and fast. It handles so pretty good. I got a, I thought it was a lot steeper, but I used the fancy fancy slope gauge here. Apparently, you don't want to take this on a slope more than 13 degrees. My slope is about 10 to 12 degrees if I did it right. So we can handle that just fine. The manual that comes with these is very good. Um, I figured with the thickness of the manual that it would be one of those where it's got four copies of the manual in different languages. But it's all English and it's very detailed. It's almost more of a shop manual than just a simple, you know, how to start your mower and where to put gas. So it's very detailed. You can download it off their website too. So if you've got a little bit older one, um, you can still get the manual for it. Lots of good info in there about how to take off the deck, how to adjust everything, where to lube, all your lube points, when. It should, it's like a, like it's almost like a shot. Pros and cons. Pros, um, obviously it's John Deere. So you got, you got a good quality build. Um, it's got a reputation for reliability and uh, toughness. So we'll see how it goes. Like I said, obviously at 3.7 hours, I don't know for sure, but I'm hoping it lasts a very long time, like decades. Um, if my old snapper from 1986 only recently died, surely this won't be just one. It's made in the USA, the small tractors especially. I don't know how many of all the components are USA made, but locally supported, built in Greensville, Tennessee, USA. So that's usually a plus for people wanting a USA made product. And I'm pretty sure it's also union made. So if you're a union guy like, like I am, most of my family is, union made is always kind of an extra bonus as well. Great service so far from my local dealer. Obviously I just bought it and they delivered it. So they were, you know, all that went smooth and great. 
cons. There's really not any cons with it. It's a little bit more expensive than comparative models from other brands. Obviously, its biggest competitor is probably like Cub Cadet, and it's going to run $150, $200 more per model. You know, if you look at a 42 inch single cylinder, 17 to 19 horsepower. All right, so just a little walk around of the mower. You got the front. It does have incandescent bulbs, but they're pretty bright. Um, they're easy to get to. I'll show that in a second. The front end. And you've got uh, grease zerks here on the little A-arms. Lifting up the hood is really easy. You can just grab it right here. There's no clips or anything. There you go. The lights, as I mentioned, pop right out. Nice and simple. In the engine compartment here, you've got the uh, battery sitting in the kind of underneath the steering wheel. Hang out so you can see a little bit. You have your starter. Here's your spark plug right here, front of the cylinder. Here's your muffler. You might have noticed on the front, underneath here, that your exhaust aims out the front. It's kind of funny, you can see grass blowing as it thumps along. On the other side is where. Here's your carburetor, then down here's that oil filter I was telling you about. And as you can see, you've got, there's a bolt right in here, but that is your engine cowling, and it, of course, goes right up into your, all that, so it's not like that's going to come off. So we'll find out, and there's not a lot of clearance in there, about a finger's worth. So we'll see how much of a pain that is to get out of there. And back here, here is your toolless oil change. Uh, this is a little cap and you kind of rotate it. So obviously, yeah, that's going to make a mess. There's so much stuff on here to, to bolt in. I have a feeling it's just going to make a mess and you'll just have to clean it up. So that's kind of disappointing. But at the same time, it keeps the mower looking sharp on the outside for the body lines. And I mean, honestly, you're only going to be doing an oil change, you know, once a year in the spring or the fall. There is your uh, quick attach for your hose to clean out your deck. And under here, is your air filter and they popped right off and there's the air filter it's a cartridge style and that just pops right back on you have the instrument panel the cockpit so to speak demonstrate some of this here so parking brake you set like that and to release you push down comes right off and we'll pause again here's your throttle of course, that's full throttle with the choke. Here's your hour meter. It's always on. Here is your reverse knob. So what you do is when the blades are engaged, you push this button and then you engage your reverse a little bit and then you can let go of the button and then you can steer in reverse while you're mowing. If you let off that and do it again, you gotta remember to hit that button or you know it'll start to stall out. And then obviously you've got your, your key. The lights aren't actually on when it's running. So when you're, when you're running, you know, you turn it one more and that's how you crank it. Now it's in the running position. Then you can kick it back and then now the lights are on while the engine's running. So it kind of threw me off. I didn't think the lights were working at first because I'm like, shouldn't the lights be on when the motor's running? No. Double foot lovers. Some of the older models have a uh, heel toe arrangement. So there's a single, single lever, but, uh, you work it with your toe and your heel, but I, I like the the side by side pedal arrangements a little more. I did add my first accessory. I got the uh, the mulching plug or block, so I just took off the exhaust chute and it just straps on. As you can see, with rubber bungee cords, it's uh, plastic, heavy plastic, ABS. It costs like twenty eight bucks, and as you can see, it it kind of I don't. It seems like it's on there the way it's supposed to, but it does let a lot of gla grass kind of slip out. But, you know, it does the job. There's also a bumper for the front I want to get that just pins into these bolts here, holes here in the front, and it sticks out to about here. Just kind of help protect the front end. I don't know if it interferes with opening the hood, so I haven't quite decided if I want to get it. It looks neat. I don't really need a bumper, though, for what I do. I'm not running into stuff yet. All right, you have the glove box and the all-important cup holder, which is set up to take big honking glasses. It's tapered down in there, so you can put your big, big gulp in there. And then your glove box. As you can see, it's got the cutout here to put in a lid, a uh, cover, 
and it costs like six bucks so I will almost certainly add that just because this does tend to get grass clippings and stuff down in there here's your gas gauge I got a little under half a tank so I've got I could mow one more full time here's the seat and like I said the the seat is a little bit of an upgraded model and it tilts forward here's your gas as mentioned it's a, a two and a half gallon tank the seat is adjustable as you can see here down slides forward and back nice and easy these are attachment points and there are a matching pair up here on the dash and what those are for is it's got a cover like a sunshade um, if you live up north and you're gonna put on the snow plow and all that it's got like a full-on enclosed cover uh, like cockpit you can put around it there's a bucket holder that attaches to this hang a bucket on and I'm sure there's probably all kinds of third-party stuff that attaches to that as well down below it's getting a little dark back here this you have to pull this out and now it's like in neutral and you can move it around if the parking breaks off when that's engaged it's not going to move because it's engaged the transmission so if you hop on and start the mower and it doesn't go anywhere make sure you got that pushed in I've made that mistake a couple of times. And of course down here you got a, a trailer hitch, you know, it's just a hole. Uh, deck height adjustment is very easy to operate. It's spring loaded. It's got from one to four inches, one to four inches here. And I think these are quarter inch adjustments. I think there's like 12 adjustments. So very easy to operate. The rear tires are 20 by eights and they have a, uh, I think it's 10 pounds of pressure in it. And the fronts are 15 by six, I believe. And they have like 14 pounds of pressure in them. But that's about it for the walk around.